Shavua Tov, the last few weeks um, we've been discussing different stages in our preparation for Shavuos to become uh, successful in learning. First week we spoke about becoming a learner. Last week we spoke about the idea of seeking advice, finding mentors, it could be parents, rebellion, people who've uh, had that experience, the life experience that they could help guide us, and we need that forever. It's not something that we just have in our youth. It's something that, no matter what stage of life you're at, you always need to have people that you could go to for advice. And today, I want to speak about a third aspect in allowing us to be successful in uh, Torah learning. And that is one of the 48 ways, one of the Memchas Kinyani Torah, Sameach Bechelko. You have to be happy with your lot. Now, we can't forget, sometimes people get caught up in the 48 ways to uh, look at each one individually and think about it, something to learn from and something that we could uh, grow from. These are 48 ways to get us to acquire Torah. That's what it is. So you have to try to understand each one of the ways. How is it going to help me acquire more Torah and acquire more wisdom? So asameach bechalko means I'm happy with my lot. I'm satisfied with my lot. Normally, this is translated as follows. If I'm always looking to pursue and obtain more materialistic items, I need another car, I need another house, I need another shirt, I need this, I need that. You're always thinking more, 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 more. You can't focus on, uh, on learning, right? You can't focus on, on growth on, in, of, in Torah and of knowledge when you're always looking for other things. So obviously, if a person is happy, okay, I have one jacket, I have one shirt, I have one coat, I have one house, I have one car, I'm happy with that, so I'm not, I can now learn because I have time, I can focus. If someone is always looking and searching and grabbing and yearning for, for more and more materialistic items, you can't set time to learn, you can't try to grow in your own Torah study. That is the simple explanation of the Mishnah. However, Reb Chaim Velazhener, in his Sefer Ruach Chaim on Perkei Avos, has what at first glance seems to be the most radical explanation of this statement. Almost like you're not allowed to say it. But I'm going to say it, I'm going to explain it, so don't leave in the middle, okay? He says as follows, Sameach b'chalko, happy with your lot, is not referring to materialistic possessions. It's referring to spiritual achievements. Which means, you learned something today? A little bit? A word, a pasuk, you worked on one of your character traits a little bit, sameach b'chalko, you should be happy with your lot. Now, that's ridiculous at first glance. Why? Because everyone knows there's a famous Tana de Be'elio that says, Chayav kol echad ve'echad mi Yisrael. Every single one, every individual of B'nai Yisrael. That means every individual. Kol echad echad means me and you. No matter who you are, where you live, what your background is, every single person. Chayav Lomar has to say, Chayav, he's obligated to say, Matai, when Yagiu Maasai will my actions reach the Maisim of Avram Yisak and Yaakov. Every single one of us always have to say, we're obligated to say, when will my actions reach the actions of the great Avram Yisak and Yaakov? Which means we always have to be yearning and waiting and like anxious about when am I going to get there? I, I want to get there. I want to be great. I want to be a giant. I want to be greater than the greatest. So how in the world can you say that it's appropriate to be misameach b'chalko, to be happy with your lot when it comes to spiritual achievements? It seems to be a contradiction. On one hand, we're saying, oh, you learned the new vocabulary word today? That's so nice. You should be so proud of yourself. Maybe you should make a party on the porch. That's what it says according to Chaim Velazhner. On the other hand, you're supposed to be like, I'm a good Yaakov. What's a one word? What's one pasuk? One page of Gemara? Come on. You held back for a moment, yelling at someone, speaking Lashon Hara. You held back. One thing, big deal. They were Avram Yisak and Yaakov here. We're trying to be from the greatest of the great. So this seems to be a contradiction. Okay. Here's an answer that I heard from my Rebbe, of Yaakov Friedman. He actually said it from this podium three years ago in Ishatara. Okay. And he said the following idea, obviously uh, 
embellish a little bit, but, but th th this, this was the idea. Why is it w that we sometimes don't accomplish great things, or as great as we can? What, what is it that holds us back? So there are two things. One is we don't fully believe in our own personal potential. We don't believe we can do it. So if we don't believe we can do it, we're never going to be able to do it. And that's a mistake. Because we have enormous amounts of potential within us. If God wants us, put us in this world to be able to do something, he gave us a certain mission, that means he gave us all of the levels of holiness inside us to obtain. We have the potential to hit great heights. We just don't believe it. So we don't believe it, we'll never get there. That's one mistake. Two is that we don't yearn for it. We don't, our bar, our ceiling is low. Whether it's because that's the way we grew up and people capped us in kindergarten, they decided how smart we are, or what we're gonna be doing 20 years later, whatever the reason is educational system, whatever it is, community sometimes. Everyone has their reasons. We have ceilings, our ceilings are low. We don't yearn for the unbelievable, for the incredible, for the thing that no one would have ever dreamt of. So on one hand, we don't believe in ourselves enough that we could do it, and we don't yearn for those great things. But that's wrong. We have to believe in ourselves. And we have to try to see in ourselves things that we've done that, whoa, I never thought that would have happened. Or I see other people that could do it. Why was he able to do it? We also have those powers. We have to try to believe in ourselves the tremendous kochos, the tremendous potential that we all have. And we always have to say, chay of Adam Lomer, we always have to say, when am I going to get there? When am I going to get to be great? I have to yearn for greatness. Those are the two things, the two ingredients that we have to have in our day. However, even when we believe in ourselves, and even when we constantly yearn to be giants, we have to realize that it's a gradual process. It can't happen at once. And just like when you climb a ladder, you can't jump rungs, you have to go step by step, so too, as we yearn and we believe in ourselves, we have to make sure that we go step by step. In fact, the Gura says in Mishle, in Parakyotas, Pas of Bez, 19.2. The Pasuk says, V'at v'raglayim chotei. Someone who's impulsive in his ascent, in his climbing, he'll remain empty. The Gura says the word chotei, we normally translate as sin. He says chotei really means chaser, lacking. If someone is impulsive and he's trying to jump and jump and jump and go higher and higher and higher really fast, he is going to have holes in his climbing. He is not going to be able to hit the height that he wants to have. And just like if you jump for a, a ladder and you miss, <laughs> it doesn't work out so well for you. So the same thing is with our climbing and our growth in, in spirituality, we have to make sure that we're not impulsive and we're going ahead and taking step by step. Okay. But now here comes the, the key. I could yearn for greatness. And I could sit with a guidance counselor, and I could say, I believe in myself. I could do anything. I yearn to be the greatest. And I actually have a map of how I'm going to get there. And I understand, don't worry, guidance counselor, you're not going to have to lecture me on this one. I understand that I have to take step by step, and I can't jump, and it might take some time. But, and here's the big but and the key. As I'm taking those steps, I'm bored out of my mind. I mean, this is not enjoyable. <laughs> I understand that I have to take step by step. If I don't take step by step, I'm going to fall down. That I got but it's not exciting, that's not where I want to be. I don't want to be at step four. I'm yearning for step 100, for step 1,000, for step a million. Step four, now, I know I gotta do four, and then I'm gonna do five, and then, but I just can't wait till step 1,000. I don't enjoy every step of the ascent. 
Right? That, that's a normal feeling, because that's not where I want to be. I want to be up there. Comes along the Mishnah and says, wrong. Hasameach b'chelko. A person has to feel that he is pleased, he is happy with the chilek, with his portion that he received. You got to step two? You got to step four? Party! You should be ecstatic. Do a dance. It's amazing. That is the key in order to be able to be successful in your learning. And let's take a, a, a mushal, a few parables to appreciate this and to understand this. The Chafetz Chaim says, the Chafetz Chaim has a book called the Kitzer uh, Sefer HaMitzvos. Okay, he took, we have 630 mitzvos, many of them are not applicable nowadays. So he cut them down to less amount of mitzvos that are only applicable nowadays. In the introduction to that book, he has a fascinating thing. He quotes a Pasuk in Tehillim, Kuf Yud Beis Aleph, 1.12.1, the Pasuk says, Haluka Ashrei Ish, praiseworthy is the man, Yirei Hashem who fears God, the mitzvos of chafetz ma'od. With his mitzvos, he very much desires. And the Gemara says in Avodah Zarah, on Yud Tesem et Aleph 19a, the mitzvos of, in its mitzvos, he desires the mitzvos, the low schar mitzvos of, not the reward for mitzvos. Okay, the Yirei Hashem, the fear of God, he desires the mitzvah and not the reward for the mitzvah. So how could that be? It doesn't make sense. We know in the beginning of Pirkei Avos it says, you shouldn't serve God only for the, the reward. But you also had to like the reward. I mean, the reward is pretty amazing. If you think about it for a moment, like he points out, it says the, 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 the mission Avos also says in, in the fourth parak, one moment in Olam Haba, the next world, of the enjoyment of the next world, one moment, one tiny little moment, equals, or is greater, from the entire world in this world. What does that mean? That means, from the beginning of time, all of the incredible enjoyment that the princes had, the kings had, the wealthy people had, any enjoyment that anyone has ever had in the entire history of the world, doesn't even equal one moment in Olam Haba. Now, that's pretty exciting. What are you supposed to tell me? I'm not supposed to be excited for that? Or, and that's with mitzvahs, by the way. How about with Talmud Torah? With Talmud Torah, the, the, the Mishnah says in Peah, we say it every single day, Talmud Torah, Kinegut Kulam Torah is better than mitzvahs. Even more than mitzvahs. It's beyond. One word. One word of learning Torah is equal to all 613 mitzvahs. One line of a Gemara, one Pasuk in the Chumash is even beyond that. So, so we're talking about enormous, beyond belief reward, right? Am I supposed to want that? Am I supposed to be excited about that? So says the Chavetz Chaim, no, it's not what the, you read the Pasuk wrong. The Pasuk doesn't say you shouldn't be excited about the reward. The Pasuk doesn't say you shouldn't want the reward. Yeah, you could want it. You can be excited about it. You can appreciate it. But it's saying something else. It's saying, b'mitzvosav chafetz ma'od. You're allowed to be chafetz. You're allowed to inj- want. Chafetz means to desire. You're allowed to desire the reward for mitzvos. But very much desire, super excitingly desire, the fear of God only focuses on the mitzvah. Why? Because the mitzvah is the ability to connect to God in the greatest way. The connection that a person can have when he puts on his tefillin, when he doesn't speak Lashon Hara, when he does a chesed, when he learns Torah, that connection that he has, that mitzvah, is, is beyond. And that's so exciting, that, that connection that he can feel is so awesome that that's what the Yerei Hashem, the fear of God, just what he wants. Yeah, you could also want the reward that's going to come with it. But like, really want it? The connection, what, what more could you want than the connection itself? The chafetz ma'od is the connection. A person has to realize that every single moment, every single thing that he accomplishes throughout the day is huge. 
Forget about the reward, just the connection that a person could have with God is enormous. You held back from cutting someone on line downstairs at the lunch line, you know, at good lunch, and you were really hungry. Okay, really, you should have been there, but he walked in before you, he didn't realize. He just held back, said, I'm not going to say anything. That's huge! It's not like, oh, yeah, okay. It's huge! It's tremendous! I finished another page of Gemara and I learned another halacha. One little halacha, one little nothing. Come on, the other guy knew it already when he was five. One little nothing. That's huge! You learned another pasuk in the Chumash the Rashi. You had another idea, something you appreciate. Huge! You respected your parents in a way that maybe you wouldn't have in the past. Huge! Huge! Every single second of the day, we're doing huge things. Huge! So what's our issue? <laughs> Why don't we notice it? Why don't we feel it? So the Piazetz and the Rebbe said as follows. He had a sefer called Hachsharas uh, Ha'avrechem. He's, he's famous for the sefer Chovas HaTalmidim, but he's another sefer called Hachsharas Ha'avrechem. It was pulled out, it was, it was uh, buried in the, in the ghettos, and uh, pulled it out and they published it. After the war, he was killed by the Nazis. And he says, he points out something very fascinating. He says, why is it that if, God forbid, someone's going through a difficult time, or even say better. Someone uh, makes fun of someone. Okay, let's say someone makes fun of you. Okay? And it hurts. All right? So what happens? Afterwards, you walk away, and you start thinking about what he did to you. Or well, the facial expression that he went in. The fact that he said it in front of someone else. The fact that he thought that he could even have the chutzpah to say that to me. And who does he think he is anyway? And ooh, the way he said it reminded me of that. Mm -mm. It, it, it start going on and on and on. And after a while, like, it builds up a big fire inside us, right? And to the extent that we start hating the person, we don't let go. We don't let go. When it comes to like, a good thing that happens, we have great things that happen over the course of our day all the time. All the time. You have a good relationship. You have a little bit of success. Good weather. So many blessings that Hashem gives us the course of the day. Right? What happens? You go through it. You go, the next one finished. Go to the next one, go to the next one, just keep things keep on moving. If a person would flip it, he says, <laughs> when something good happens, and you take a step back and say, wow, that was amazing. I understood that halacha. Psh, yeah, that wasn't so easy. <laughs> but I came on time, and I focused, and I thought about it, and I listened to my rabbi, I listened to my chavrusa, I didn't just, uh, you know, get my ego, let my ego in the way. That, that was amazing. Wow, that was so good. And you start to think about that. And when the bad thing happens, you just let it go. Who cares? Who cares what that guy did? And who cares about his facial expression? Who cares about what he said or how he said it or when he said it and what he thought about me? Who cares? Wouldn't our lives be so much better? It would be so good, but we don't do that. We don't cherish every single accomplishment that we have. And the whole idea of time flies when you're having a good time. What's, that's that's fake. Why is that time flies when you're having a good time? Because you're having a good time right now, and you can't wait for the next moment. The next moment, next moment, next moment. You're never living with the moment. But God forbid, if you're sitting in, a, in a, the emergency room in a hospital with someone, it feels like it's taking forever. It's just you're there forever, because every moment, oh, 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 you're feeling every moment. So after a while, a lot of us make it, that was a long day, that was a long night. But all the amazing things that happen again and again and again and again and again, and again just keep on going. Because you always think of the next thing. And time flies. Time flying isn't a good thing. We say in Davin, Ki heim chayenu yamenu. The Torah is orech yamenu. It makes our days long. What's the deal? If we're supposed to be enjoying it, why is the day long? The answer is because if you just can't wait for it to end, so then every single moment is just, you know, it's terrible. So then, yeah, you're right, it's going to be long. But he, he, if, if it's enjoyable and you enjoy things in the right way, wow, that was amazing. What? Excuse me, Chubbis, i got to stop for a minute. Hey, start to dance. What are you doing? You're in the basement. I, I just understood something. <laughs> I'm so happy. And then the next minute, you dance again. And the next minute, dance. Okay, guys, don't do this, okay? But it's like, like, every minute, we're just sameach. We're just so happy about every single accomplishment. That's a lot of minutes in the day. Our day is going to be long. The Orech if you enjoy the Torah in the right way, the full day is going to be very, very full and very, very long. So on one hand, we have to believe in ourselves. 
And we have to yearn for greatness. And we have to always say every single day, when am I going to get there? When am I going to get there? We have to yearn for that. But we realize they have to take steps. One, two, three, four. And the Mishnah is coming to tell us, according to Chaim Velazhener, that as you climb that ladder, every single step, and, and every single step doesn't mean dressing a certain way. I'm talking about tiny little nothings. Little nothings. I could have said a, a joke to someone, and maybe would have hurt, hurt his feelings, and I held back. I said something a little nicer to someone, positive, made him feel good. I learned a little, any little thing, every little thing. If I'm Sameach Bechel, I'm like, psh, that was an amazing accomplishment. That was great. Okay, now let's go on for the next thing. Psh, that was great. Now for the next thing. And just keep on going again and again and again. You think about things, take time out of your day to think about what we've accomplished. Where have we come from? What have we gained? So that is one of the 48 ways to be Kona Torah. Because the more we have that love, the more that we have that excitement, the more that we appreciate every little thing that we're doing, is going to motivate us. It's going to give us the fuel to go ahead and do more and more and more and more and more. It's going to show us and remind us that we're capable of doing things. It's going to let our ceiling open up even higher. It'll let us yearn for even greater things. Well, I did that. Well, I can do this for sure. It'll push us more and more and more. So it's not a contradiction at all. We have to believe in ourselves that we can be tremendous, because we are. We have to yearn for the greatest of the great. Don't let anyone cap us. Think above what we think we're capable of doing. Always yearn. But, sameach b'chelka. Every step of the way, we have to see the amazing excitement, the amazing accomplishments. One word of Torah, the powers that we're shooting across the entire world every single time that we learn is enormous. We can't even understand it. The reward that we get for it, everything is just, it's just amazing, the connection. It is so vast, and if we don't appreciate that, spend some time learning about it. Learn about what, what comes out of our learning, what comes out of our performance of mitzvahs. We have to appreciate these things. And then the Ezra's Hashem will all be on the strong road, on the highway, full speed ahead, at being able to be successful in our Torah learning. Shavuot Tov.